Hello everybody. So now we will continue on the lecture about internal migration. And here uh, we are on this topic about temporary migration in China, also known as floating migration in China. And we are going to go to slide 58. Should we start this specific topic here? So in China, a permanent change in residence requires the government approval. And with this approval, individuals can officially transfer their household registration from one era of origin to an era of destination. And this household registration is known as HUCO. And uh, so this HUCO system is a household registration system that was first implemented in 1948, and it acted as a barrier to prevent rural residents from moving into urban areas without the control of the government. So, because like urban residents were entitled to subsidized housing, social insurance, uh, medical care, and formal employment, and rural residents were denied these rights and entitlements. So a lot of these rural residents moved to urban areas looking for better conditions of life, better jobs, but without the proper household registration in the area of destination, they would not be entitled all these government services. So that's the way that the federal government in China implemented the system as a way to avoid people moving from rural to urban areas and then which so they would actually they, they were pretty much just looking for better job conditions but the government was trying to avoid this uh, massive flows of migrants and a way to prevent rural residents to move there was to implement a system that would not let them access a series of government services so in the late 1970s Deng Xiaoping began making some major economic reforms in China after he succeeded Mao Zedong. And he opened many low-level construction, manufacturing, and household service job opportunities for rural agricultural workers. And so this was uh, all these economic reforms that were going on in China and that did um, prevent even more migration from rural to urban areas. And so just to, to better explain these uh, different types of internal migration in China. So the permanent change in the place of household registration uh, formally approved by the government is one type of internal migration in China. So people moving, for example, from a rural area to an urban area, and if that person has the approval by the government, so that person will have access to all the services, all the benefits, education benefits, health benefits, health services that the government provide in urban areas. But many people are moving from rural to urban areas without the approval of the government. So this floating migration in China is the residential movement of crossing a political boundary without the approval, the permission of the government. So movers of this type of migration are known as floaters. So floaters in China are exactly those people moving from one uh, area in the country to the other, and usually from rural to urban areas, without the approval of the government. So they have not altered their, their permanent registration in a household registration office. So they have not changed um, with the government where uh, information about where they live and they move from rural to urban areas without this former uh, approval. And then by doing that, maybe they will still uh, get uh, better earnings in the area of destination, usually urban areas, but they will not have access to all those uh, government services that we mentioned before. And in the 19, based on the data from the, 19, the, the 2010 census, there were more than 220 million floaters in China. And these migrants are mainly young and unmarried men and women looking for blue-collar service and household jobs. 
Overall, they are more educated than the rural population that stays in the rural areas, but they are less educated than the general population. So usually these are young people, not married, both men and women, looking for more blue-collar jobs, service and household jobs. And that's a, a massive amount of people that are moving from rural to urban areas in China without the approval from the federal government in China, then they don't have access to a series of government benefits when they move to the urban areas. And um, so just to have an idea of the recent levels of floaters in China, for every legally permitted migrant, there are about 12 to 13 inter-province floating migrants. So we talked about like two kinds of internal migrants in China, the ones that have the legal permission from the government and the floaters. So the floaters, the level is much higher than legal migration, internal migration in China. So floaters comprise about 40% of the country's total urban population in China. And floaters make 20 to 40% less than permanent urban worker counterparts. So if we compare floaters with other permanent urban workers in the same occupation with the same level of education, for example, they usually make less money than permanent urban workers. So these people are moving from rural to urban areas without the approval from the government. So they are uh, engaging in the informal labor market, getting jobs in the formal labor market, not having access to government benefits. And because of that, they are making less money. So their wages in the big cities, but when, why do they still moving from rural to urban areas? Because their wages in the big cities are still several times greater than the wages they would have made in their home rural villages. So they are moving from rural to urban areas without the federal, uh, without the government approval. They are making less money in the area of destination than other permanent urban workers, but that money that they are making using the informal labor market, it's still, they receive more um, higher wages than the if they had stayed in rural areas. And as we mentioned before in this uh, chapter, uh, they usually remit a large proportion of their salaries to their families in the home villages. So we mentioned previously in the chapter about uh, the effect of remittances. So remittances happens not only when we have international migration, for example, Latin Americans uh, coming to the US and sending money to their relatives who stayed in Latin America. Here we see the, the, the role of remittances uh, in internal migration in China. People moving from rural to urban areas and then they send money back to their relatives who stayed in, in their home villages because usually these migrants, as we saw before in China, moving from rural to urban areas, they are younger uh, adults and they are unmarried, both men and women, so they still have a lot of relatives living in their home villages in rural areas. So it's just an example to show how internal migration, it's really important and it ve really varies across countries in the world. And in China is really interesting because the government really has all these rules trying to prevent, to decrease the number of people moving internally from rural to urban areas. The US doesn't have any a federal government policy related to that. China has, so it gives us uh, an important context in which to try to understand how these government policies affect internal migration. And then these people, they are making uh, less money and don't having access to zero series of benefits, but the movement continues to happen because they're making better earnings if they st stayed back home and they are providing money back to their home villages by sending money to their relatives. So that's this topic about internal migration in China in this uh, chapter about internal migration. Thank you very much.